An inquiry has been launched into the causes of the shooting last year that so shocked the close-knit community. Parents of the victims are campaigning calls for gun laws, killing 12 students for and Kevin Kachadorian. Important we understand this phenomena. December 15th, 2000. Dear Franklin, Tonight was our office Christmas party. Not easy to pull off with five people. And me. The ghost of Thursdays passed. Sorry, but I still don't know what to call it. The incident minimizes obscenely. The day our son committed mass murder is just too long for every mention. So, Thursday it is. Anyway, here I am, home early, wondering if writing to you is quite normal. Back in 1983, I had a psychiatric label. Postnatal depression. Dr. Reinstein's tautological diagnosis. Baby Kevin was disinterested in my breast, so I was feeling rejected. Rejected? Kevin wouldn't even take my milk from a bottle. The smell of me made him gag, and he cried. Oh, not the standard. I'm wet, I'm hungry, I'm tired. Snivels. His voice was a weapon. Howls smashing the walls of our loft apartment. It was outrage. Wrath. Kevin was off the scale. He hated being alive so much. Weeks passed. I began to feel more and more draggy. But when you get home, you don't ask me how I am. Instead... How's my boy? Please don't. Keep Franklin, he only just got to sleep. Uh, yes. After five hours of him shouting the house down, I do consider five he might be hungry. Then. You think I'm exaggerating? Of course he cries. I'm he worried he didn't. He doesn't cry. He screams for no reason. Well, I'm sure that's how it feels sometimes. Oh, hey, little man. How are you doing? Oh, it seems pretty good natured to me. That's because he's exhausted. And so am I. Which is why it all seems worse than it is. I think I'm running a fever. Okay, well, just relax. I ache. My skin hurts. I'll give him his feed. My head pounds. We're in this together, Eva. Why do you always take his side? He's seven weeks old, Eva. He doesn't have a side. I lumber to the bathroom. When I return with the thermometer, is it my imagination? Here, you read this. Or do I catch your eyes rolling ceilingward? I can't see straight. It's not funny, Eva. What? Heating the thermometer. I'm not heating the thermometer. Eva, it's 104. Oh. You look at me. You look at Kevin. For once torn between loyalties. You put him down. I have mastitis. In both breasts, which is quite an achievement. In the hospital, the relief of simple quiet is immense. Left alone with Kevin, you hire a nanny. Or should I say two? The first one quits. Siobhan, the replacement, stays. Thanks to her solid, almost saintly presence, I can return gratefully to work. But as the months advance, she begins to look drawn. Then to call in sick. I worry. She clearly isn't faking. But Siobhan's absences mean I have to stay at home with two-year-old Kevin. Siobhan, are you happy here with us? You and Franklin have been wonderful. And Kevin? He's not an easy child, is he? Well, he still isn't talking. It's hard to know what he's thinking. I know he hates me. I know how you feel. He pulls my hair. Hard. He knows it hurts. He throws all his toys out of the playpen and, and won't stop screaming until they're all back in again. And then he throws them out again. And it's the same with the feeding, changing and everything. I don't know where he gets the energy. You mean you don't know where you get the energy? 
As Kevin's screaming rises to buzzsaw levels, Siobhan and I look each other in the eye. Neither of us gets up. Eva, I can't do it anymore. You'll be fine without me. It's different when it's yours, isn't it? Yep. Totally. You can't quit. I'm sorry, Eva. Me too. So I am left with Kevin. I stand over him, watching him scream. Our gazes lock. Siobhan's gone. You drove her off. Proud of yourself, are you? You little shit. Mummy was happy before little Kevin came along. And now Mummy wakes up every day and wishes she was in... France. Mummy's life sucks now. Doesn't Mummy's life suck? There are some days Mummy would rather be dead. Rather jump off the Brooklyn Bridge than listen to you screech for one more minute. I don't know how long you were standing there, Franklin. Long enough. You were beyond anger. You were passing judgment. Eva. December 19th, 2000. Dear Franklin, Since I last wrote, I've been thinking about that moment. We never discussed it because we stopped talking. Or maybe started censoring. Kevin certainly stopped screaming. Overnight, while I wasn't complaining, his silence had an oppressive quality. He just sat inert, eyes unlit, and he still hadn't spoken. Our pediatrician assured us this was normal, but he seemed so remote, so understimulated. I resorted to the cartoon channel. I don't like that. Kevin? Not just a word. Sweetheart? An opinion. What did you say? He bats a hand against the television. I don't like that. I experiment with my new toy. I ask him if he wants a cookie. He says he hates cookies. Kevin, what do you like? That is a question he's unwilling to answer at 17, yet alone at three. Kevin, can you say mommy? No. He says, plainly. As with the screaming, Kevin refuses to repeat his performance for you. But you are ecstatic at the news. Your son can talk. What he wants to say doesn't seem to concern you. Eva. December 23rd, 2000. Dear Franklin, excuse the jittery handwriting. I've just seen Kevin, my final visit before Christmas, but it wasn't just him that upset me. It was the visitor's waiting room. It's a grim place, Franklin. A lone AIDS poster doesn't qualify as decor. White mothers of delinquents are a novelty. They sit rigidly behind newspapers, avoid eye contact. The implication is bald. I should not be here. By contrast, the black mothers sit serenely in the same universe they have always occupied. But there is a tacit understanding amongst us all. Never discuss the crime. Today, perhaps to challenge the stereotype, I smile at the woman with the cornrows and the festive food parcel. She smiles back. My Marlon. He say prison food ain't fit for a pig. (laughs) Kevin's never been that interested in food. Only eats if no one's watching. Doesn't want to be seen to need it. I have to leave food out for him. Like a dog. My companion's eyes have glazed. I speak so rarely now, Franklin. When I do, I kind of spew. I've warned Kevin the food at the adult facility will be worse. The woman's focus returns. Sharply. Your boy don't get out at 18? This is waiting room code for, you must have done something bad. Kids do a five-year minimum for murder. More for seven high school students and an English teacher. Oh, and a cafeteria worker. Maybe Kevin had stronger feelings about food than I thought. K.K. 
That, that must be a mighty cross to bear. There is a silence, but I no longer need to work to hold her attention. She's riveted. He look back on what he done. He feel, you know... Remorse? Why? Now he's somebody. Doesn't have to worry about whether he's a geek, a jock, or a nerd. He's a murderer. And best of all, he got away from me. Now, clearly aware this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, she has to ask. You ever figure out what drove him to... You figure out why? It's probably my fault. Relief! She picks up her food parcel. Eyes on me. It's always the mother's fault, ain't it? That boy turn out bad, cause his mother's a junkie. She don't teach him right from wrong. Nobody ever say his daddy a drunk, his daddy never home. Nobody ever say some kid's just damn mean. Loretta Greenleaf! It's hard to be a mama. I'm sure you try the best you could. Are you still trying, ain't you? You hear? Now you take care of yourself. And don't be thinking any more of that nonsense. Loretta Greenleaf squeezes my hand. I squeeze back so hard she must fear I'll never let go. Loretta left me thinking. About those arguments. Remember, Franklin, you wanted a house with a yard, neighbors with kids... I wanted to keep traveling and writing to keep our impractical Manhattan loft. In the end, we compromised. You'd find us a house in the suburbs. I'd take a three-month research trip to Africa. As it happened, I got the raw deal. The Africa edition was a non-starter, and... I could not shut you and Kevin from my mind. But you're getting impatient, Franklin. You want to hear about Kevin... Well, after my encounter with Loretta, I was in no mood for a small talk. Kevin, I need to know. Do you blame me? He smiles. That marionette grimace pulled up at one corner. My smile. Why should you get all the credit? Merry Christmas, Kevin. Was it worth the wait, Franklin? The whole conversation lasted 60 seconds. My coffee has gone cold, and the waitress has brought the check. I should go. Eva. Eva.